Congressman Jim Jordan. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for being here this weekend. Good to be with you, Maria. Explosive hearings this week. Can you take a step back? What was most important yeah. uh, in terms of what you've learned from these uh, whistleblowers and this testimony? Well, yeah, I, I do think if you step back, there's sort of three fundamental questions here, Maria. The first one is, what were the Bidens doing to get the money? I mean, 20 different shell companies, nine different Bidens getting paid. What was the service? What was the product? What was the value they had? The only logical explanation here is it was access to then Vice President Biden, maybe even before that, Senator Biden. The second key question is, was he really involved? Was it just, just Hunter Biden's operation or was Joe Biden involved? It sure looks now like he was based on this confidential human source and the information we got in the 1023 form, thanks to Senator Grassley. And now I think we're at the important final stage of this whole thing, which is who are you going to believe? The two whistleblowers whose testimony has been consistent or the Garland Biden Justice Department, which can't get their story straight. David Weiss has said three different things over the last month and a half about how he handled this investigation, what authority he had. The whistleblowers have been true, consistent, and their testimony has not wavered. So I think now that's the important phase. And frankly, that's the phase. That's the that's the part that uh, the Judiciary Committee is really going to examine, because David Weiss, Maria, said on June 7th in a letter to me, he said, I have full authority to determine where, when and whether to file charges. And then 23 days later, he wrote me another letter. He said, I stand by what I wrote, but to clarify, but I want to add to it. He said, I actually don't have full authority. My authority is limited to my geography, his U.S. attorney's district. Well, which is it? You can't have full authority and then say you're limited. Yeah. And then just a few weeks later, he wrote Senator Graham and changed his story yet again. And I think that is the key. What, and that's what we're going to be looking into. Well, what does A.G. Mar uh, Merrick Garland have to say about all of this? Did Merrick Garland uh, perjure himself by telling Great you he question. didn't get involved here? Great question, because what's so interesting is when I first wrote the attorney general clear back in February asking about the special counsel, whether there should be a special counsel for the Hunter Biden investigation. He doesn't write me back. He doesn't answer. And they always give you a response. He doesn't answer. I write him again, the attorney general. Again, he doesn't respond. But guess who does? David Weiss, the U.S. attorney in Delaware, who's supposedly handling this case. That in and of itself is unusual. So the, the attorney general has been pretty quiet other than what he testified to, which is David Weiss has full authority. But now David Weiss tells us he doesn't. And more importantly, Gary Shapley and Ziegler both told us that all through this investigation, the investigators and the prosecutors were on the same page. And then something happens near the end of 2022, October of 2022, it all changes. And that's this now famous meeting where David Weiss tells tells Mr. Shapley and others of the investigative team. He says, I don't have full authority. I asked for special counsel status. Main justice wouldn't give it to me. That is the key distinction. He asked for it. And he was denied is what get Mr. Shapley says. Mr. Garland says, no, no, no. He had full authority. Mm. He could have had special counsel. If that's what he really wanted. Those are the two different stories. We got to find out who's telling the truth. My gut tells me it's the two whistleblowers. Well, all of this leads to many people in the House saying that it is time to uh, draw up impeachment articles. Are you moving to impeach Attorney General Merrick Garland? This is this is a question for the full conference, but I will tell you this. The speaker has been very clear. Speaker McCarthy said, if we have to go to an impeachment inquiry, we will, in fact, do that. It sure looks now, based on all this evidence that keeps piling up, based on what Senator Grassley released this week with the 1023 form, what we heard from the whistleblowers this past week and the conflicting statements from the Justice Department, it sure looks like we're moving in that direction at a pretty quick pace. But ultimately, Maria, that's a question for the full conference, Republican conference in the House of Representatives. Uh, we will do what the Constitution requires if that's where we need to go. But we have to figure that all out. Um, one thing I do know is if you head down this road, it completely consumes Congress. I was, uh, as you know, I was on the other side of this when they Democrats did their ridiculous impeachment of President Trump four years ago. And the amount of time and focus it just demands from the from the Congress is is huge. But if that's where we need to go, because that's what the facts say and that's what our constitutional duty is, then we will, of course, move in that direction. And, and throughout that time, during the impeachment proceedings for President Trump, the FBI had the Hunter Biden laptop. They knew about the money that the Biden family had taken in. So, I mean, there's a broader question of how you reform the FBI. But right. before I get to that, Federalist article this morning, revelations about Biden's $10 million Ukraine bribery scheme warrant impeachment. Let's talk about the big guy. What are you going to do about it? 
Well, we, we, we may, that may be the question too. It may not be about, may not be about the attorney general so much, although I think there's some important things there. It could be more about the president himself. Again, that's why Chairman Comer is going to continue to pursue his investigation. He's looking to get Hunter Biden's business partner, Devin Archer, in for a transcribed interview, in for a deposition where we can have it under oath, get that all in the record. Um, he's been trying to get that done. There's been a number of times it's been rescheduled. Hopefully that happens soon and we'll get that information. And then, of course, we'll see where we go from there. So you so you will bring uh, uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland in for questioning is what you're saying. What about a, an impeachment? Well, tri- yeah, go ahead. Well, he, he he is scheduled. He is scheduled to come in front of the uh, Judiciary Committee for the annual. Every year, the attorney general comes in front of the Judiciary Committee. That'll be in September. So that is scheduled already. Uh, as we get closer, there's going to be lots of questions we have about this particular subject for the attorney general when he's in front of us uh, in, in two months. I mean, people are calling this influence peddling the fact that, you know, James Comer uh, has told us he has already identified 17 million dollars that the Biden family has taken in. Yep. He told me it's upwards of uh, 30 million dollars. Andy Biggs on the committee said it could go as high as 100 million dollars. We have no idea how much money the Biden family has taken in. But what about that in and of itself, putting the weaponization and the interference right. of, of the Justice Department in there? What about the actual money that he's taken in? Have you identified decisions that he made as vice president that could justify him getting paid for them? Well, well, of course, the the, the, the big one that always comes to mind is what happened in Ukraine when he got the, the prosecutor, Mr. Shokin, fired. I mean, that's always the big one. What I, the irony here is, that is the very kind of situation that they turned on President Trump yeah. four years ago. And in fact, it looks like they're the ones who were involved in some shady dealings when it came to the, the to the country of Ukraine. It's always the way it seems the Democrats operate. They, they try to accuse you of what they're, they're in fact involved in. Right. That's exactly what it seems to me they did to uh, to President Trump. So I know the other day, John Solomon talked about how we need to go back and, and look at all the things that took place in, the, in 2019 during the impeachment inquiry. We're, we're doing that. We're going back and looking at all those key facts because I think those are coming back to light now. Um, so, yeah, we will we will look at all that information. OK. And real quick, in terms of the reform of the FBI, uh, you, your colleagues have talked about moving it out of Washington. Is that what you want to do? Move headquarters out of Washington? Yeah. Well, we certainly don't want to build a new headquarters in the Washington, D.C. area. We're looking at uh, going to Huntsville, Alabama, because they already that's already their second headquarters. I 20 see. of their 30 divisions are there. OK. Uh, so we're looking at, at, at that. We think that could be helpful. All right. We will leave it there. Mr. Chairman, good to see you. 